We are live. Good morning, basketball fans. It's Monday morning here in the Northeast. It's been raining pretty hard, but we're not as wet as Coach Boz was after that game on Saturday. Coach, first of all, is that your first ever? Or how many Gatorade showers have you had in your career so far? We had a few in the NIT run. We got a couple, and I got to tell you, Bob, I'm still cold from that. That water was so cold. Like, oh, my gosh. And then I have, like, Micah Gray in the back taking off her water bottle and making sure I got even wetter. So, it's okay. When she gets on the line later, we'll, we'll go over that. So it's hey, you watch some of these football games, right? Like, middle of January, they're oh. adopting coaches. with. I can't imagine how cold that feels. But now yeah. you have first-hand experience. Yeah, it was cold. But it was great. And, and, and the girls are the ones who got it. They did a wonderful job, Bob. Um, it was really one of the best games we've played at Seton Hall um, from beginning to end as a team. But coach, real, real quick, I have a couple of questions uh, in regards to Saturday's game. Um, from a business perspective, how, how do how does like a school like Seton Hall get UNLV to come all the way out out east to play in a game like that? Yeah, it's interesting. Um, I, I was sitting at um, uh, an event we were recruiting. Um, and the, us and the UNLV coach, uh, me and the UNLV coach sat next to each other. I introduced myself. She introduced herself. I complimented her on how strong their program is. And she's like, you know, we'd love to come out to New York. Would you be interested in, in hosting us? And do you think you'd get another game? I said, yes, yeah, plenty of teams around us. We'd love to have you. I said, I don't know when we can return. She goes, no, it's okay. We have to leave Vegas for two weeks um, in the third in the second and third week of December because we have the rodeo here and they literally take over our whole building. They so do. we have a place to practice and we can't play. So we like to do our nice trip then. So one of our nice trips is we want to go to New York City. So Bob, they came in on Thursday and they're leaving next Friday. So they're here for a week. In New York City they're staying, like right in Manhattan. Brazil will tell you as a as a Jersey girl, but a young woman who, who went to Manhattan. It's a lot of money, but now that's their big trip. Are they so, playing I mean, anybody else while they're here? Yes, they're, they're playing um, Fairleigh Dickinson next on Thursday. So okay. they have, yeah, so they have a big, um, big stay here and stuff. But it's what they do for their big trip. Like we went to the Bahamas, they're going to New York, and we'll return at some point. Not because we have to, just because I would like to take the the team out to Vegas one day and and uh, see. And I'll, I'll be joining on the trip uh, as, as media. So I lived in Vegas for a while. Uh, many years ago, and, and you're and you're right. Uh, December is all about the rodeo, yes, and the, and the and the bull riding or whatnot. So yeah, they take over everything. I remember being out there. It's uh, pretty pretty. Everybody with cowboy hats all of a sudden invade yeah. the city. It's pretty yeah. wild. Yeah, it, it, you're right, and that stuff. So we became friends, and you know, when I scheduled the game. I didn't think they would have come in as 23rd in the country and undefeated, but you know, it was a great test for us, and our and our and our ladies aced it. I give them a lot of credit. So what was the uh, what were the main factors in such a large victory over a very quality team? Go ahead, Brazil. This was a huge game for us, but since it was home, we had to defend our home court. Um, we knew that we we're going against a great team, and personnel and the preparation for this game is very important. So just playing, defending well, and um, getting our offensive execution great was really good for us. Fantastic. And, uh, Coach, did you expect a, a, a win of that magnitude? <laughs> no. I, 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 if you signed me up for a one-point win, I would have signed myself up. Just because I have so much respect for UNLV. I mean, uh, you know, their coach, their head coach is an outstanding coach. Their staff does a great job. And they have really good players. I mean, they came in and they had just um, uh, handled Arizona by close to 20 and Oklahoma on the road by, like, 15. So this was a team that had a real, you know, good, strong resume. Their net was nine. Their ranking was 23. And, you know, we knew we needed to win this game to have give ourselves an opportunity, at, you know, for postseason at the end of the year. And the girls came out focused and, and they cared about winning. That's it. Oh, that's fantastic. Um, so, Coach, a few questions. Another question I had in my mind over the weekend after after seeing your, your the big victory. Um so where, if you're this, you know, you NLB team, now you're about to enter Big East play. Like, where would they fit if they were playing in the Big East this year? Um, now, where do you think they would fit? I mean, are, are, will they will they challenge UConn, or are they probably a, maybe a little step below? I think they certainly would be right there with Creighton and Marquette and us. 
There's no question. I mean, they manhandled Oklahoma, scoring almost 100 points on them. They they beat Arizona by 20 to 25 points. So they can play with anyone in the country. You know, UConn is still UConn, though. You know, while I think, you know, Creighton and Marquette right now are two and three in our league, you know, we're, we're right there as well. And, you know, they're, you know, St. John's had a great win over Villanova. You have to give them respect, too. And the team we play Wednesday is, is really good. Uh, won seven in a row. Georgetown's nine and one. Um, Coach Haney has done a great job of building on Tasha, what she started. Um, his staff is really, you know, Coach Mazzante and, and, and the rest of the assistants have done a great job uh, as well. Um, you know, the Big East is tough, Bob. You know, you cover it. You know, I, I think UNLV can finish anywhere from second to whatever. But, you know, it, it's physical every day. And I think the physicality is something that people don't realize until you play a Big East team. Now, uh, last question on UNLV. Um, is their style of play a little different than the Big East? Uh, is it more of an open, faster game? I know Big East is very physical. Yeah, no, they're, they're very fast. I mean, they average over 80 points a game. Um, they have all three guards can shoot the three at a high rate. Um, they're two close players. One's on the WNBA draft board. Um, you know, they, 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 they're not as physical as the Big East, but they're very skilled, like the Big East. All right, so our special guest today uh, forward graduate Brazil Harvey Carr. Brazil, how are you today? I'm good. How are you? Not too bad. Not too bad. Um, so I noticed the past couple of games you came in a little bit a few weeks ago, and then the next game after that you had a pretty substantial role in the in the game itself. Uh, I heard you had you had, a, you had an injury, correct? Correct. Uh, what was that? For, what was the injury itself? Um, like about a year ago, I, I tore my meniscus, so I was battling injuries coming back. All right. You know, Bob, it was just, just you know, the amount of time and effort that Brazil has put into um, rehabbing this knee. Um, when I give her so much credit because she could have taken the easy route and said, listen, it, it, you know, the amount of hours I have to put in with no guarantee that I'm going to get better and no guarantee of, you know, a role, a lot of kids wouldn't have done it. But that's how she's been raised. She's been raised to fight and to work hard live up to her bargain. She came here to play and, and, and for us to win. You know, Brazil could have gone to many different schools, including a bunch of the Big East, but chose us. And, and and we forged a relationship, which was very strong, which has been up and down, to be honest, because of, you know, just, you know, her battles and expectations and everything. But the one thing I'll always remember about her and why I'm so proud is that she's been raised the right way and to work hard and to never give up and be a woman of her word. And she's very modest in what she says about her injury, Bob. Like, oh, it's a meniscus. Meniscus is a four to six weeks. Hers was a year because of the amount of damage that was in that knee. And um, I give her all the credit. And obviously, Deja, our trainer, has done a wonderful job as well, our doctors. But, you know, Brazil deserves a lot of credit for this. And to have her here, I didn't know if that would happen even a month ago. And, and not only, Bob, as she played, she played well. And now she's got herself in the rotation, and she's going to be a huge weapon for us for the next 18 Big East games and many postseason games, hopefully. The yeah. result, describe your 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 game. Um, are you more of a shooter? Are you more of a slasher? Um, what's your game? I'm more of a shooter. Um, I like to shoot it behind the arc, but if I have to get inside, I will. Um, but yeah, very confident shooter if I'm left open. So what's, what school did you come from uh, before this? I came from Manhattan College, went there for two years. And two years prior, I went to the University of Rhode Island. Okay, so you're basically in the Northeast. Correct. And you're from Camden, huh? Yeah, I'm from Camden, why, New Jersey. Why don't you talk about her, your high school career? I mean, Brazil's very modest. She's one of the top, I think, 10 or 15 all-time lean scorers in the state of New Jersey in high school. <laughs> um, she obviously knows Azana very well. That's a story she can touch on as well. Go ahead. Yep. Yeah, back in high school, um, I was a great scorer then. Um, I also, me and Azana Baines have the same trainer in high school. So right after um, school, he would pick me up and then pick her up and we'd be right in the gym. Um, both lefties. Um, so I'm very familiar with her game. We grew up playing basketball, a, a tons of a lot of basketball, a lot. Blackwood, Blackwood's pretty close to uh, Camden, right? Yeah, it's literally only like 15 minutes away. Uh -huh. She's not giving you the whole story. Give her the whole story. Tell us. So, me and Azana Baines are both left-handed. Um, 
we both were also born in the same hospital, which is kind of like silly. Um, but yeah, so we twins. played, yeah, twins, which could be cause us. Yeah. But yeah, very um, similar when it comes to that. It's crazy. And born on the same day. And born on the same Bob, day. Born on the same wow. day. Both left handed. Both great basketball players in South Jersey. Both born in the same hospital. I mean, like, they, I mean, Fox wants to do a whole a whole thing on that too, which will be great. But like, it's an amazing story. Like, I just couldn't believe it. Like, crazy. yeah, that's a little crazy. And hopefully, both of you bring the team to the uh, to the big dance this year, right? Of course, that's the ultimate goal. So, uh, I'm sure with your how many how many points did you score in high school? You know offhand? Um, it was two thousand three hundred ninety three. Now, was that more than the Wagner? Uh, no, he he has more up on me, but oh, that's, that's pretty substantial, though. Yeah, that's a pretty. I mean, I I, I, co I cover high school basketball. That's a pretty substantial uh, number right there. I think it's top ten or fifteen in, in, in New Jersey state history. I gotta tell you something about Brazil that I did not know. She can really, really rebound the ball. She's an extremely intelligent defender. So she she's she's really made up for you know the injuries that she has to battle through. And let me tell you something else about Brazil. You know, she, she, she played in two Mac championship games as one of the best players on her team. So, you know, she's used to winning Bob and that really attracted me about her too, because like I said, she could have gone to other big E schools and other schools that maybe didn't have quite the um, opportunity to play in the postseason as hopefully we will. She chose to come here and to win. And that's the type of person she is. So what was your decision on coming here, Brazil? What was your main uh, um, components? So just the um, relationship I built with Coach B and the like, the winning this culture they have in this program, and just trying to expand my game and the and the resume of um, the resume of games they always portrayed and the culture they had really intrigued me, and I was really excited once I got a call from Coach B back in last spring, and I knew that I wanted to come home. Have you, has your family come watch you play yet? Of course. They're always at every home game. That's fantastic. Yeah. Hey, Coach, real quick. Um, Saturday's game, how, how was Walsh Gym? Was it, uh, did you have a good crowd on Saturday? Yeah, it was an amazing crowd. I felt like we felt um, off their energy. And just from start, I, I just want to recognize our our starting five. They start the game strong, and our reserve players got in the game, feeding off that energy as well. And then we just had a great turnout. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're, you're going to see as um, once students get back from winter break and whatnot after Christmas, you'll see the, the Walsh gym start getting more packed. And, hey, I try my hardest. I know the Seton Hall basketball group on Facebook, we try our hardest to promote, you know, the, the team as well. And, you know, they love having me there on, on court side, and I'm always reporting back and forth. So I think the buzz is going to really start growing after this win on Saturday. You'll start seeing the uh, fans packing Walsh gym. And, and we had a great crowd, Bob. Like, like, like Brazil said, the energy of the of the arena was fantastic on Saturday. I, you know, uh, with NFL still on, with other college games on, um, during finals, I, I I agree with Brazil. I thought our energy was great. You wait till the second half; it's going to be our fans need to go out and get tickets because it's we're gonna have, we have a bunch of sellouts coming up, uh, not just UConn but other games. So we need everyone to come out and enjoy it and. We play a fun style. We're, t we're tough. We, we, we The kids have come a long way. Definitely. This a couple of comments. Uh, Kurt Valenti, uh, what's up, guys and gals? Great show. And uh, Doug Matthews, a big supporter of Pirate Basketball, men's and women's. So great commentary. Outstanding guests. Thank you, Doug. And hey, we have a lot of listeners uh, to this, uh, this show. Um, all right, Coach, so now you're entering the Big East season. Um, coming off a big win. Uh, obviously, you're going to – I don't know where you're going to – answer this already but is this team ready for biggest play absolutely i mean we have great leadership we have a lot of veteran players like i said these kids came here to win bob like you know like i said i keep saying it with brazil but like you don't understand how good a player brazil is like you look at the box which played eight minutes 10 minutes 12 minutes and no no her minutes will increase now that she's getting healthier but you know she's not gonna play 38 minutes like we really have no one that plays 38 minutes but she could at other places but she wants to win. She wants to go to the tournament. She wants to be successful. And it's only going to help her in life. And, you know, obviously, you know, I, I'm indebted to her because, yeah, we built a strong relationship. And it's been hard. Like, you know, we'll we both be honest. It's been hard because she wants a lot. I want a lot. And But she has never wavered from the fact of I want to play basketball and I want to be here. 
And I give her a lot of credit for it. And I love her for it. And it's something that, you know, at the end of the day, it's something I'll always have respect for her and her family about for sure. Um, no, Bob, we, we, we got to play. Like the Big East is tough. We have 18 league games instead of 20. Um, we got a tough game against Georgetown. But, you know, we put ourselves in a position, number 34 net. Um, you know, we, we're going to get some votes in top 25 because the kids have earned it. But we know each game is tough. And like I said, Georgetown's won seven in a row. It's not going to be easy. So I'm um again, I was absent Saturday. Azana is feeling better, um, obviously. Yeah, I, I think so. I, I I think you know Azana is, is is back. Um, you know, relatively healthy. You know, Mari, um, Brazil's you know made huge strides. I mean, you know, we we you know we we glossed over, but we beat FDU. Um, we held them to twenty seven points, and I'm not gonna lie to you. I went into that game extremely nervous. We, we we played without Azana, but like someone like Brazil came in, stepped in, made things easy. We you know people like ah oh, you won the game it wasn't it? FDU was playing really well. We made them not play well, and that's because of the kids that were dedicated and focused. And we talk about always being ready. We're always being ready. You know it's important. You know and 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 we don't win some of these games you MES and stuff as easily as we do. You know, people think because you win by 30, the other team's not good. No, the other team was winning games. So, you know, we beat UNLV by 30, and they're a top 25 team. You know, we just played that well. And that's a big thing for us. we got to play well, Bob. If we play well, we can beat anyone. But if we don't play well, we're not way better than anybody else either. That's how good the teams are that we play. That's fantastic. Uh, so, Brazil, what are your goals this season? You know, uh, graduate year. Seton Hall, uh, any any goals yourself you're looking to accomplish? Um, so my major is communication. So um, I want to finish my degree in communications. Um, but my ultimate goal was coming here to win games. Um, I haven't been to the NCAA tournament yet. Um, I've been to my conference championship twice. But I think we're going to make leaps and strides and be able to get there with the competitive team we have this year. So what are your what are your, what are your goals for your career in communications? What do you see yourself doing? After basketball, um, I want to go into coaching. So I take a lot of classes like that that pertain to um, coaching and my communication background would, would help me. Fantastic, fantastic. And she'll be a great coach, Bob. Like, I, I, I'm not saying it because she wasn't sitting here, I would tell you the truth, because you know me, I told you. She's one of the more intelligent players I've coached in a long time. She's a, we ask her to play multiple positions. She missed a lot of practice time. She still knows all the plays. Comes in, does what she's supposed to do. She knows how to play defense because of her brain. Like she's gonna be a really good coach. She's not just a great player because she's just so athletically gifted and stuff. She's an extremely intelligent player, and like those things mean a lot. Like you know, I I, I think as someone that you know will be an outstanding coach one day, I think she's gonna bring those traits as well. The coach with the uh, high school basketball season starting this past week, um, has your your early success is it leading to any um, inquiries from any players in the area? Yeah, we're recruiting a lot of the players in, in our area. You know, it, it's hard, Bob. Like, you know, you don't even know who you're going to need from year to year anymore with all the transfers okay. and all the rules and, and everything. You know, we, we have obviously three, two great high school players coming in next year, but we lose a lot of talent. It's going to be hard. Like, um, you know, it's helped. You know, winning always gets you more notoriety. You know, I, um, I was on a podcast this morning. I'm, I'm, I was on, I'll be on one tonight. Um, Brazil's obviously on one now. I, I know you, I thank you for inquiring about her. But, like, you know, it, it, it's, it's you know, we're trying to stay in the moment, trying to enjoy this year, too. Like, I want them to have fun. Like, we're going to go to a Nick game in a couple of weeks. It's going to be amazing. We're going to go on the court. We're going to meet the players. You know, or, you know, it's awesome. just stuff like that. I want us to enjoy ourselves. You, you know, we went to the Bahamas. I think we had a good time there, you know, and, and stuff. So little things like that are important. So, um, not knowing what's top of my head, is this Georgetown's first Big East game as well on Wednesday? Yes, yes, yes. Sir. They're both a very emotional game for everybody involved. It is. It is with Coach Butts' passing and stuff. They've really, you know, been together and stuff. And uh, Coach Haney's done a good job. We have a former Seton Hall player on their team, uh, Maya Bembry. So, it'll be nice to see her again. And, um, you know, it, it's going to be a tough game, Bob. They're good. And they're, you know, they're ranked top 70 net in the country. And they're, they're tough. They're the, I think, one of the top five defensive teams in the country too. So we have our work cut out for us. 
Speaking of that, where, where's uh, where's your team located? You know offhand? In in terms of um, in uh, yeah, we're in net, we're number thirty four in the country. Okay, which is great. Yeah, That's great. If we could finish in the top thirty five, then we would have an outstanding chance. But we just want to take it day by day and have fun. Like I put too much pressure on the kids. I put too much pressure on the staff. I honestly, I put too much pressure on myself the past three, four years. We just want to have fun. If we play well, we're one of the best teams. We we are one of the best teams in the country. If we don't play well, we're not. I mean, it is what it is, right, Brazil? I mean, I agree. We're just having fun. Like, you know, I, I just excited. Like, honestly, it sounds dumb, but I enjoy watching her that she's out there playing. So I recruited her. I've always loved her game, and now I can see her play. That means a lot to me. Yeah, I must say from. Uh... From a media and fan standpoint, you do have a very fun team to watch. I've been preaching that since uh, the first time I saw you this season. You know, you, you play fast, you play hard. The defense is there. You're challenging shots. You're challenging inbound passes. Yeah. Uh, you got scores on the inside. You got scores on the outside. And like, like we, we've been mentioning, you have players from all over the country. So uh, your, your national uh, presence is definitely increasing, which is fantastic to see. Thank you. Yep. Yep. So we got to wrap it up because we got yep. practice now. Um, Absolutely. But- um, I will not see you until after the new year. Yep. So happy holiday. Merry Christmas. Happy new year. And I'll be back on my seat. Hopefully uh, first game after new year's. And Merry Christmas to everyone. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Thanks for Take having care. me. Thanks, Bob. Go get him, coach. Thanks. I'll meet you. Bob, you're